So I want to continue looking at stoichiometric networks and how we write out the differential equations, but from a slightly different angle. Consider the uh, following really simple uh, network. Let's change the color back to white. So I'm going to have a very simple uh, linear chain. One, two, three, four reactions and three species. I've labeled the species S1, S2, and S3. And let me label the reactions V1, V2, V3, and V4. Now I can write down the differential equations for this system quite easily. Uh, I know that the rate of change of S1 is what's coming in minus what's going out. Now I'm assuming here unit stoichiometries in all the reactions. Okay. And then ds2 equals v2 minus v3. And then finally ds3 equals v3 coming in minus v4 leaving. Now, what I want to consider is an alternative way of, of writing out these equations in a more compact form. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate the stoichiometric information from the rate information and from the rate of change information. So in particular, first of all, I'm going to write out a, a vector that holds the reaction rates. So this is going to be called the reaction rate vector. Um, and I'm going to have something, I'm going to have a matrix over here. That. And on the right hand side, I'm going to have the rate of changes all the way down to ds3dt. Okay. So what I've done, I've, done, I've separated uh, this, these equations into three components. This empty matrix here, which I haven't said anything about, a rate vector and a rate of change vector. Now this matrix here will actually contain the stoichiometric coefficients. And I'm going to do that by labeling the rows S1 to S3, and I'm going to label the reactions V1, V2, V3, V4. My question is then, what should I enter into here? Well, it's actually quite straightforward. All that's going to go in here are the stoichiometric coefficients. So the stoichiometric coefficients um, of S1 with respect to V1 is 1. So I put a 1 there. S2 and S3 are not involved at all in V1, so they get zeros in their entries. V2, well, the stoichiometric coefficient of uh, V2 with respect to S1 is minus 1. And let me write down this, this stoichiometric coefficient here as well, which is 1, S2 with respect to V2. So S1 with respect to V2, S1 with respect to V2, the stoichiometric coefficient is minus 1. Uh, with the, and uh, the stoichiometric coefficient of V2 with respect to S2, which is this one, is plus 1. And S3 isn't involved at all in V2, so that goes to 0. V3, I do something similar. The stoichiometric coefficient is minus 1 and 1 here. So S1, however, is not involved in V3 at all, so that's 0. Um, but it is involved in S2 with a stoichiometric coefficient of minus 1. And it is involved in S3 with a stoichio stoichiometric coefficient of 1. And finally for V4, stoichiometric coefficient here is minus 1. S1 is not involved in V2, in V4, so that's a 0. S2 is not involved in V4 at all, so that's a 0. But S3 is involved in V4 and has a stoichiometric coefficient of minus 1. So I've managed to separate now what effectively amounts to the structure of the network, rates, and rates of change. So this entire thing here is often called the system equation.